Hello. So, good morning. Uh, my name is John Pagonis. I'm Soteris Drobolos. And we're the guys from Zansi Labs giving the boring talk. So let's start, yeah? So, before we start, since we're Zansi Labs, we want to collect some evidence, yeah? So we're going to ask you a few questions, and we'll ask you to raise your hands, and Soteris will take a picture, and then we're going to process it with deep learning, okay? So we're going to uh, actually data gathering this time, so... Yeah. So the first question is, I, it's a serious question, by the way. Uh, how many of you practice Scrum every day? Hands up. Hands up, Hands up. Okay. So, how many of you want to practice Scrum one day? Yeah? Higher up. And the rest of you are just here for, to troll us, yeah? <laughs> All right, that's excellent. So, uh, how many of you work in a company uh, of 10 or less members? Okay. okay. Uh, 10 to 50 members? I'm actually going to count them after the, afterwards, your hands. So, get them up. Uh, and 100 to, uh, 50 to 100 people on your company? 50 to 100? And more than 100 people in your company? <laughs> you have our sympathy. You're very brave, guys. <laughs> All right. So, so okay, we're going to give you three stories. And we would like you to again raise your hands at the end of the story if you recognize the story, if you've lived through it, or if it's familiar, OK? The first story, or scenario, shall I say, the product owner comes in. You have set the planning meeting. The developers are there. She comes in, brings the candidate backlog. The developers have been working really hard on the previous sprint, yes, in the previous iteration, so they haven't actually seen the backlog. They haven't reviewed it yet. So what she does is she has to spend time during the planning meeting to explain those stories, those requirements. Which makes them waste time. Yeah. So basically, the Scrum Master is there, and she goes like, oh, time is running up. We need to wrap up. Yeah, it's time boxed. Yeah. So what do the people do? They actually try to rush and finish, but they overrun. And during that meeting, you see that the developers basically overestimate or underestimate the requirements because they haven't had time to, to actually have a, look, uh, have a look through them, yeah? Time runs up, you continue, at some point you finish. Okay, so who has been through that scenario, has observed that scenario? Come on. Oh, interesting. Okay. We feel your pain. OK. Next scenario. So the PO and the business analyst bring the brand new important requirements urgently. Developers go over there, and they go like, man, you know, we have refactoring to do. It's more interesting stuff to do there. And they try to convince the product owner. Why? because actually they don't see much value in those stories, yeah? They're looking for the evidence, and you're, they're sitting going like, yeah, I feel something's going on, but uh, yeah, exactly, maybe, I don't know. You know it, you've seen that? Who's been through that? Through who's been through the important and urgent requirement scenario? Okay. Don't worry right. about it. So scenario number three. This oh. is actually my favorite one. Okay, you're in the middle of a sprint, right? Everyone's working very hard, but somehow you find out that some of your stories are a bit ambiguous, okay? So they are not exactly clear, are probably contradicting with each other, so it doesn't make, it doesn't make many much, uh, pretty much sense. So what do you do there? You actually commit to them, you explore them, the team finds some issues, some hidden issues inside, and nevertheless, you actually commit it. When the review comes, what do you do then? What happens? Change requests. Yeah. So that's a very much of a pain point there. So yeah. whoever felt that. You've been through the scenario where basically you spend money. Hands up. Come on. Don't be yeah, ashamed. To develop something that the stakeholder doesn't want. It's a change request, even through Jira. Yeah? It has happened to us before. Who's wasted money? Can I see the people who waste money? Excellent. Right. Yeah, we do that. We used to do that. OK, so we have those three scenarios, yeah? We gave them names, the fluffy sprint planning, 
the important requirement scenario, yeah? And the inevitable change request, the scenario where I'll do my best, yeah? For a moment, reflect. Is there a common theme there? Something you find common in those three scenarios? Just think about it, yeah? Let me help you. There is a problem. In those three scenarios, we haven't had time to refine the requirements, and therefore, we didn't have enough time to understand them, to understand them well. Yeah? That's the problem. Yeah? So preparation is key. Yeah? You need to prepare a backlog which is ready to be executed. You need to prepare. Yeah? But as a team, to be prepared, you have always to plan for it ahead, right? This is a major point. So, what does the Scrum guy, uh, guy, sorry, say about this? You. No. Okay. Uh, what does it say about this? About preparing? Any ideas? Any ideas? Anyone? <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. Let's start with the basics. That's what it says. The Scrum Guide gives us five events. Yeah? None of those events actually refer to refining the backlog. It's all about execution. Yeah? So if we visualize this, the typical um, sprint would be, let's say, 10 work days, 15 calendar days. You would have a sprint planning session. The fluffy one. Yeah, sure. You're going to have the sprint where developers actually implement the code. You're going to have the sprint review. With the change requests. Yeah. And then you have the sprint retrospective. That's a topic for another uh, talk. So this is the typical visualization of the events in the Scrum Guide, yeah? Now, if you look at page 14 of the brand new Scrum Guide, page 13 in the old one, for those of you that haven't uh, looked at the update, it says that the Scrum team uh, decides how and when to refine the requirements, yeah? And a rule of thumb is that 10% of the development team capacity, of the development team capacity, should go to refining those requirements. Yeah? It's there on page 14 of the Scrum Guide. And that's basically what the guy says about refining requirements. And as we know, requirements are the reason why most of the bugs and the problems in software happen. Yeah? Since, this, since 77 was the first paper by Hoare on this subject, yeah, most bugs happen due to requirements. Okay? So what do teams do to better the situation? They add a backlog refinement meeting before the spring planning meeting. And some teams actually add more. That's an improvement. That's good. Still, the guide says that you need to spend up to 10% of the development team capacity. And the development team capacity mostly happens during the sprint, yeah? Those 10 days. So to improve that, we need to add, or rather take away capacity from development and allocate it to processing requirements during the sprint. That 10% should be taken from there, and that's an extra bonus. Yeah? Makes sense? That's what the guy says, so we follow the guy. 10% of the development team capacity. So if we take that 10% and imagine an example of a team of six people working eight hours a day for 10 days, then if you do the math, it's 480 hours in total for a sprint for the whole team. That makes that 10% being 48 hours for the team, for the whole team, in a sprint, during a sprint. So uh, that's actually that number. One day per developer, per sprint, to do refinement work. Yeah, so one day per sprint if your sprint is a two-week sprint. That means that developers have to spend time with the PO, the BA, the UX designer, the customer, whoever, to understand requirements, 
process them and make sure they actually build software which is needed and software which adds value. Yeah? So the pitfall, yes, the hidden danger, is that people do not allocate this time. Yeah? The second most critical pitfall of new and maybe not so new scrum teams is that they do not allocate enough time to process requirements during the sprint. Yeah? And therefore, they have all these issues about finding vague requirements, rushing, not understanding, not finishing their stories at the end of the sprint. Yeah? Because what happens is that when you do backlog refinement during your sprint, you cater for two things, for understanding of the current sprint and for preparing for future sprints. So that the next time you arrive here, you don't have a fluffy sprint meeting. You, you, you expect the requirements, you know what's coming, you have processed them, you refine them and you get ready, yeah? Now, if you're a BA, a PO, or a UX designer, what you can do with this time is conduct usability tests with your users, create prototypes and iterate on them, and actually run user research by asking people what they really need. And that's the point of this actual time that you're going to do. Then all these are going to create the facts, the evidence, to uh, enhance your stories, your user stories at the latest, at the next, and at this current sprint. Yeah. If, you, if you're a developer, for example, and you're working hard, your business analyst, if you're in a big company, or your product owner, will come to you and ask you, or the, the UX designer will tell you, okay, we're thinking about doing this. So I will do a quick prototype. So, uh, can the system actually handle it? Is it risky? Is it dangerous? What's going to happen? So you have a dialogue yeah, for the future. And for the present, you have a clarification session or many clarification sessions. Because you cannot capture all of requirements in documents. Some of it will stay with humans. That's okay, as long as you have the dialogue and as long as you have small iterations. Yeah? And you should distinguish between project documentation and product documentation. Yeah? Project documentation is the ephemeral. Yeah? It stays for a couple of iterations. Product documentation is what stays for later. So you, you, sh you should balance how much information you capture with, hu with humans and with documents. Yeah? And of course, yes, as developer, let's not forget that, uh, a way to optimize this further is to actually cater for the inevitable problems that come from production, from the evolution of a system. Yeah? So if you're a project manager, you should be happy with this slide because you know what's happening. Yeah? You know that developers will, have, will create bugs at some point, so you need to cater for those. You need to, to allocate 2%, 5%, 1%, depends on your organization. And you need to allocate time for development, new stuff, new value adding, and you need to allocate time for creating, taking the crude oil and making it petrol for the engine, refinement. Yeah? Those three things will help a lot. And those three things have to do with the most important thing. Basically, not killing the development team's flow. Not having interruptions, or actually, having allocated time for handling interruptions. Yeah? So you can move smoothly, happily, and sustainably into the future. Yeah? Yes. So we're big fans of Mr. Weinberg. Everyone, anyone here knows Jerry Weinberg? You know Jerry Weinberg? Yeah. Nice. Very good. OK. You're too young. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so uh, actually, what this says is you do requirements work basically to create things that people actually like. So you have to use this time to define what people want, what people need, to design the systems according to those needs. Yes. Right? And it doesn't matter if you do Agile, Scrum, Waterfall, it doesn't matter. You have to do the requirements processing work in order to build systems that people want. Yeah? Same applies everywhere. So, how should we work 
to build systems that people want to use and pay for. Yeah? How should we do this? We need to reflect on this. Yeah? And, and I think we need some coffee right now. Yes. So, thank you very much, guys. We can do the reflection with coffee. Thank you.